got no bucket and the well is deep. How do you get to the living water? You got no bucket and the well is deep. How do you get to the living water? You got no bucket and the well. Shalom. Today we are returning to our study of the correlation between the astronomical signs on the ecliptic, what some people consider to be astrological signs, and the correlation with the Hebrew months of the calendar. Today we're discussing the 11th month. In Hebrew is known as Shvat. The name Shvat does appear once in Tanakh in Zechariah 1.7. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month of Shavat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yahweh unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. And the prophecy there is about a man riding on a horse with some other horses, and the man is in the midst of the trees. The word uh, Shevet, which is... Uh, where the word Shvat comes from, is also translated as scepter and tribe and rod. We're going to look at a few of these scriptures. Uh, Genesis 49.10, and I, I chose the New King James Version because I like the translation better. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. The King James says gathering of the people. I don't really think that that's the best choice, so I chose this translation. Anyway, Shevet here is scepter. Genesis 49:28. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it, that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one, according to his blessing, he blessed them. So the connection between the scepter and the tribe uh, has to do with authority, and rulership, if you think of, uh, we're going to see also as translated as a staff, uh, that that represents your tribe. Here we see Leviticus 27.32, and concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto Yahweh. So here this is translated rod, rod, scepter, staff, I think you can see the connection. 2 Samuel 23:21, And he slew an Egyptian, a, godly man, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but when he went down to him with a staff and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear, uh, speaking of one of the acts of David's mighty men. So here this is translated as staff. Something which happened in the 11th month uh, is in Deuteronomy 1.3. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel according to all that Yahweh had given him in commandment unto them. Deuteronomy is presumed to cover the last 30 days of Moses' life. Uh, he's reviewing for, for the children of Israel all the things, all the commandments, all the Torah, that God has revealed up until this point. The next month, Moses is going to die. According to tradition, he um, dies on the, the sixth of the twelfth month, or Adar. And, uh, and then in the next month, the children of Israel are going to go into the Promised Land under the leadership of Joshua. There is a holiday which occurs in this month. It's not a biblical holiday, it's a rabbinical holiday, but it bears a lot on what we're studying here. And the name of that holiday is Tu B'Shvat, which means the 15th of Shvat. Let's look at that. So first looking at the Tu, um, it's not a word, and that's why you see those little quote marks in between the Tet and the Vav. So we don't we, we do read it as a word, but it doesn't have a meaning of a word uh, because it's a fifteenth of Shabbat. Um, ordinarily in numbers, we would be using the yud, which is ten, and the hey, which is five, to make fifteen, as the other teen numbers are constructed. But because yud hey looks like yah and part of Yahweh, they opted to use the tet. And the Vav, the Ted is 9, the Vav is 6, so 9 plus 6. We do pronounce it as a word, 
just as we might pronounce um, NASA as a word, NASA is not a word, it has come to mean something, but it really stands for the National Aeronautics and Space maybe Administration. So we take those letters, N-A-S-A, -A, we make a word out of it. Same thing here, we're taking these letters, Tet Vav to mean 15, and uh, we make it, uh, we make a word, we pronounce a word, two, but it really stands for the 15th. Tu B'Shvat is the 15th day of Shabbat. The holiday uh, is based on this scripture, Leviticus 19.23. And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten of. And so if we are living in a climate with four very distinct seasons, we would not have any problem counting the next year's fruit. But sometimes in the land of Israel, the years of fruit can overlap on the tree, so they needed a point of time when we're going to begin to count and say, okay, this is the new year for this tree. And so Tu B'Shvat becomes the new year for trees. Originally, uh, in the first century, there was some discussion between Shammai, who wanted it to be the first of Shabbat, and Hillel, who wanted it to be the 15th, and Hillel won. So it is the new year for trees, the 15th day of Shabbat, when we can begin to count how many years the fruit, ha the tree has been bearing fruit, and is it circumcised, can we eat it, what can we use it for, and things like that. New year for trees in Hebrew is Rosh Hashanah Le'ilanot. Ilanot is for trees. It uh, also bears on when we can calculate the tithes for the fruit, uh, when, when the fruit is beginning to ripen. In the 16th century, the Kabbalists instituted uh, a Seder. So you might hear about a Tu B'Shvat Seder. Seder is the word we use for the Passover ceremony. It just means order. So it has nothing intrinsically connected to the word Passover. Seder just means order. So there is a kind of ritual that you can do if you're interested in doing it. Uh, the Kabbalists also say that if you eat fruit at this time, it atones for the sin of Adam and Eve. So good luck with that. In the late 19th century in the land, people actually began to plant trees on Tu B'Shvat and it became known for going out to plant uh, trees. It's also the time of year in Israel, the weather, where the rainy season is almost over and the sap is increased in the trees and so that is when it, the sap coming up through the tree is forcing the fruit to ripen. The word of God is compared with a tree. Proverbs 3.18 She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. When you see a Torah scroll, you see that it has these two rods on either side on which the parchment is rolled, going either direction, and those rods are called Etz Chaim, the tree of life, so it's related to a tree. In Deuteronomy 20.19, we see about rules for making war concerning the trees. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in making war against it to take it, Thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is man's life, to employ them in siege. We also see that trees are related to people. Isaiah 65:22. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Speaking of a future kingdom. In Psalm 1-3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The man is like the tree. In Mark 8, 23 through 24, we see Yeshua is healing a blind man, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. 
and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught, which means anything. And he looked up, that would be the blind man, and said, I see men as trees walking. Uh, we even bear a similarity to the way the tree is shaped. We call our arms and legs limbs, the same as the branches of a tree. Now the astronomical sign for the month of Shabbat is Aquarius and he is variously known as the water bearer or even the cup bearer and we'll look into that. You can see that the idea of the water pouring out at this time of year rising up into the trees forcing the fruit to ripen has to do agriculturally with this month of the year. In Hebrew, this constellation is known as Dali, which means bucket. Numbers 24, 7. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. This is one of uh, Balaam's prophecies concerning the children of Israel. Isaiah 40, 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the smallest dust in the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. The word dli comes from a root dala, which means to lift up. And if you think about the bucket, the ordinary course of the bucket is to go down into the well, down into the water, and then we lift it up and the water comes up out of the well, just like the water's coming up from the ground into the tree, feeding the tree. Psalm 30, verse 1, a psalm and song at the dedication of the house of David. I will extol thee, Yahweh, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made mine foes to rejoice over me. Proverbs 20, verse 5, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Reviewing what happened in the 11th month in Deuteronomy 1.3, it's an introduction to the book of Deuteronomy, and we said how Moses is uh, retelling all the children of Israel the commandment that God has given thus far to them. In Deuteronomy 32.2, he says, My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass. So the man, the human being, will take up the water of the word and it will help him to produce fruit. Now concerning the idea of the Aquarius being the cupbearer, uh, we have this word in Hebrew, mashke. You will not find the word as such in your strongs because it is a verbal form of a root shaka. The root shaka means to give a drink, and you will find that under 8248 uh, in the Hebrew, in the Strong's. The mem in front, uh, remember, makes what is considered to be a participle or a present tense verb. And uh, in Hebrew, we have to remember that I am a guard, I am guarding, and I guard are all the same verb form. So we have the same verb form here. I am a cupbearer also means the one who is a cupbearer and he is currently giving drink to the king or how, however that works. So we have two of these mashke in, um, in Tanakh and the first one is in Genesis 40. And you remember Joseph was in jail. He was in jail with the uh, butler. It's translated here, the cupbearer and the baker. And what happens is they each have a dream. Joseph interprets their dream. The baker loses his head, but the butler goes back to his former position. And Joseph says, please remember me. However, the butler doesn't remember to remember him. And all of a sudden, the king is having a dream and the pharaoh has a dream. And then the butler says, oops, I forgot there was this Hebrew guy in the jail. And so the this butler, this cupbearer, is the one who is responsible for getting Joseph out of jail. And what's going to happen is Joseph is going to be the one who's going to preserve, in fact, the whole world. And by virtue of the fact that he does that, he also preserves all of Israel 
for the next generations so the butler is the one who is pouring out the water in a sense to raise up the fruit of Joseph bring him out of the jail back into the kingdom Nehemiah is also a cupbearer and we see in his history that he's the one who pleads with the king to go back to Jerusalem to build the walls to build the temple to reinstitute the service in Jerusalem so that the people uh, can come back he, he encourages the people to come back from Babylon to do this important work to continue the service to which is intrinsic to the life of the people so that the people can be raised up and again what produce fruit A lovely thought from King David, Psalm 18, verses 16 and 17. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Rosh Chodesh Shvat Sameach. Perhaps uh, we will see the moon here shortly. I uh, pray that you have a blessed month. While we continue to live in these times, remember, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. You got no bucket and the well is deep. How do you get to the land and water? You got no bucket and the well is deep. How do you get to the land and water? You got no bucket.